Hi and welcome. If you're new, on this channel we talk about true crime and sketchy stories, while I draw portraits of missing people in memory of victims or composite sketches of perpetrators. If you like this approach to true crime, subscribe because I upload every week. Today's case is another requested case about the disappearance of Christine Kupka. Christine was the youngest of six children, and she was born in Illinois on the 3rd of May, 1970. When she was young, her parents got divorced, and then her father, who was a firefighter, passed away. So her mother, Ellie, who was a factory worker, moved the whole family to Madison, Wisconsin. She attended the Shabazz School, which was described as a very progressive and laid-back school. And then Christine went on to the University of Wisconsin, but she dropped out and she seemed to be a little bit adrift in her life. In her 20s, she moved to Atlanta and got a waitressing job. But Atlanta was really not for her. She didn't feel like she belonged. And when she visited her sister Kathy, who was living in New York, she was just enamored with the city and decided immediately to move there. So when Kathy and her husband Kevin moved out of their apartment, Christine moved right in. Her style also changed and she went from kind of flowy boho clothes to wearing a lot of sleek black. She enrolled in Baruch College, winning a full scholarship. There she founded a philosophy club at the college. She was very passionate about social issues and she would set up debates on issues close to her heart. She also typed papers on behalf of blind students. She was a vegetarian and planned to attend law school and become a civil rights attorney, focusing on women's rights specifically. She was intelligent, idealistic, and feisty. She wanted to make a difference. She was also described as very financially responsible, and she sublet her apartment to offset the costs, so she ended up with five roommates. In 1998, she was working as a server in a restaurant serving Jamaican cuisine and going to school. While at Baruch, she met and developed a crush on a young professor called Rudy Passard. He came from a family of Indo-Guyanese immigrants. He had graduated from Baruch in 1995, and he was a quality control chemist testing glue products at basic adhesives in Brooklyn, but he also taught at Baruch. He was his family's only son. His father was a Hindu priest, and his family stemmed from the highest caste in the Hindu caste system. I'm not an expert by any means, but if you're not at all familiar with the caste system, in a very oversimplified way, it can be described as a social hierarchy, which splits people into different groups by birth, and your classification determines, among other things, what jobs you are able to do in society. So, for example, the highest caste is the caste for Hindu priests and academics, and the lowest caste would be one for manual laborers. And those who fall outside the caste system, um, previously known as untouchables, including tribal people, do menial tasks like street cleaning. This is changing but it is a 3,000-year-old system, so it does still have some influence in the Hindu society. Rudy struck Christine as very innocent-looking. She described him as being like a newborn baby. Other people in his extended circle, however, would describe Rudy as very driven, very calculated, and very focused on his appearance. Allegedly, he also had a moody side. At first, he didn't believe that Christine was into him, but they grew closer, and after she had finished his course and she was no longer his student, they started dating. They exchanged numbers, but while Christine gave him her phone number, he only gave her the number to his beeper. Cell phones were not a thing at this time. So she would have to beep him, and he would call her back, which was a bit shady, but anyway... The relationship lasted for around five months. During this relationship, Rudy took a trip to Turkey, which he told Christine was for work. So five months of dating go by, and Christine discovers she is pregnant. She told Rudy, and he freaked out. He first told her that it's not his baby, because he had, and I quote, a partial vasectomy. What the hell does that even mean? 
But Christine hadn't been with anyone else, so she tells him that, and then he told her the truth. He was married. Very recently married, in fact. He had gotten married within the five months that they were dating, and the trip to Turkey, get this, was his honeymoon. So she's basically done with him at this point. But she wants to be a mother. So she's preparing to be a single mother, and she told Rudy she didn't want his money, she didn't want to be with him. All she wanted was for the child to know who his or her father was. So she wanted to put his name on the birth certificate, and she wanted him to have some sort of relationship with the child. But Rudy begged her to get an abortion because he said if this got out and got back to his family, his parents would disown him. Spoiler alert, that turned out not to be the case. He was also planning on going to study to be a dentist, and his family was going to pay for that. So he was worried that this pregnancy was going to just ruin his future. Christine refused to get an abortion, and she told friends that she was afraid he would punch her in the stomach or something, even though he didn't ever directly threaten her. A short while later, she beeped Rudy, and his wife ended up calling back, wanting to know who was beeping her husband. Christine eventually spoke to her, and after speaking for a while, she told his wife the truth. They then spoke a couple of more times, and they developed a strange sort of camaraderie and friendship. Christine tried to just move on, get, get ready for the baby, and Rudy sort of faded from her life until one day he arrived at her door, disheveled and looking like a mess. He said his wife had kicked him out. Christine was a bit reluctant. She didn't fully trust the situation, but she ended up feeling very sorry for him and then trying to advise him on how to get his wife back because, remember, she got along with his wife. Rudy had basically done a total 180 on the baby and he was now offering to be Christine's birth coach and also thinking of names for the baby. So on Saturday, the 24th of October, 1998, Rudy arrived at Christine's house. Her roommate said he appeared very nervous. Christine called her sister shortly before she left the house, and she left a voicemail telling her sister that she was going to look at Rudy's new apartment and she would be back soon. She left her apartment with Rudy shortly after noon, and she was never seen again. She didn't have money or a coat or other personal possessions with her when she left. When she didn't come home that night, her friends and her sister started worrying. She was five months pregnant at the time, and she would have checked in with them. They told police that Christina told them if something happened to her, Rudy did it. But police treated it as a missing persons case with no evidence of a homicide. They didn't interview Rudy, so Christine's family went to go find him. And it took some doing to track him down, but when they did, they saw that he was not kicked out. He was still living with his wife and his parents. He had lied. Christine's friend and her brother-in-law showed up at his house, well at his parents' house, and he wasn't there, but they asked his parents where he was because they wanted to talk to him. So his mom contacts Rudy, and when Rudy arrives home, he comes with a police escort. I don't know about you, but I personally don't feel the need to get a police escort when I have a visitor and I haven't done anything wrong. They asked Rudy what happened to Christine, and Rudy got super defensive and just said, I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you file a missing persons report? I'm sorry, but if you don't know what they're talking about, and you don't know why they are there, why did you bring a police escort for protection? Anyway, Rudy said he and Christine went shopping, and then he dropped her off between 3 and 4 p.m., two blocks from her apartment, because she wanted to go to the health food store on her way home. And then when asked which mall or shop they went to, his response was, quote, some mall, end quote. He said he stayed in the car while Christine shopped. And this might just be me, but I don't say I went shopping with someone when I just stayed in the car. And especially when I'm the person driving, I generally remember where I drove to, but maybe that's just me. The health store owner said she saw someone who looked like Christine, but that that person had been wearing peach pants when Christine was wearing all black that day. The sighting was also much later than 3 p.m. 
A laundromat also said he thought he saw Christine walk past on the street, but later said that the sighting might have been the day before, not the day she went missing. Police only interviewed Rudy once, in November, and he had lawyered up by that stage. He also had no alibi for the time when Christine went missing. The Kupka family did everything they could. They raised money as a reward for information, they put up billboards, they hired a private investigator, but Christine was not found. There is still no physical evidence that this is anything but a missing persons case. In 2010, police began digging up the basement floor of a shop once owned by one of Rudy's relatives. One section of the concrete was not like the other sections, and a cadaver dog indicated the presence of human remains, but no remains were found, so it's possible that there once were human remains, but that they have since been removed. Since then, there have been no developments. Christine's mom passed away without ever finding out what happened to her daughter. Christine's sister is still searching for answers to this day. Rudy has never been charged with anything, and he went on to become a dentist. And that is the mysterious case of Christine Kupka, or maybe not so mysterious, but frustrating nonetheless. I decided to paint rather than draw today, I just felt like it. It was difficult to find a clear picture of Christine, but... I found one that I really liked because it had sort of an old Hollywood feel to it, so I decided to try and capture that moodiness in this painting. Thanks as always for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. I really appreciate it, and I will see you next week. Bye!